Now we're going to chat about a specific rule to help us determine someone's compensatory damages, which is cost uh, to repair property versus giving someone the market value or the diminution in value. The case Terra products versus Kraft helped us determine these rules and the underlying claim here actually was both contracts and torts because we had an agreement to remedy injury to real property as well as an actual injury to real property. And so this case was really complicated. I think it'll be helpful just to timeline what actually happened in this case. And so in 1960 to 1992, Terra was conducting business on our first site, which is Terra site. In 1957 to 1969, Mallory owned this property that's adjacent to Terra site that we call Mallory site. In 1969, Mallory site was destroyed in a fire. Mallory, the company was purchased by Kraft and renamed Duracell International. In 1975, Terra purchased Mallory site but in 1986, the EPA determined that there was PCB contamination on the Mallory site, which violated federal regulations. So the EPA issued an admin order to both Terra and Kraft to implement a cleanup plan. And so here Kraft agreed to play for the cleanup and Kraft being the original owner of Mallory site before it was purchased um, by Terra in 1975. And PCBs are these chemicals that pretty much can cause cancer and other health issues, so they're bad. Now in 1988, Kraft discovers that TerraCite has also been contaminated by the migration of the PBCs, the PCBs that were on Mallory site. And so now Kraft also agrees to clean up TerraCite, right? And so that's where you're getting the injury to property, which is TerraCite's property has been contaminated, as well as the agreement to clean up TerraCite and the agreement to clean up Mallory site, which was owned by Terra. 1992, Terra decides to sell both sites at public auction and sold them both for $270,000. But Terra is now upset because the value of the sites was assessed at over 1.1 million without contamination, which meant Terra lost $830,000 in value by selling at public auction for only 270K. And so Terra sues Kraft for the 830K as well as 3 million plus co the cost of a two week shutdown when it had to move its operations when there was the cleanup going on on Terra site. Kraft responds by counterclaiming -claim for 12.5 million, which is half the amount Kraft paid for cleanup that it claimed Terra was unjustly enriched, right? Because Kraft originally agreed to pay for everything. And so the court actually decided both of these claims suck, right? For Terra's claims, it made a judgment for Kraft. For Kraft's claims, it made a judgment for Terra. And so let's break down how the court got to these judgments, um, starting with what were the issues that the court had to address. The court had to determine, was the property damage permanent or temporary to Mallory site and Terra site? And, you know, depending on whether it's permanent or temporary, what is the appropriate remedy if we determine it's temporary and the cost of repair doesn't actually fully compensate the plaintiff for its loss? The rules you said determine this decision, permanent, temporary, cost of repair, was on page 574. And first, let's just always start with that general rule, which is an appropriate measure of damages is generally defined as what is necessary to compensate fully the plaintiff. Again, you're seeing that same theme, making someone full again, but not giving them more than their actual loss. But our specific rules are whether we should give the cost of repair or diminution in value, which one would compensate the plaintiff fully. And so let's break down these two rule statements. On page 574, paragraph two, you see that the cost of repair is awarded if the damage is temporary. And the diminution of value is awarded if the damage is permanent. But how do we determine when damage is temporary or permanent? Well, damage is temporary if repairing the property will return it to its former value before the injury, both real property and personal property. Permanent um, damage occurs when one, repairing the property will not return it to its former value before injury. So cost of restoration, it's futile. It's never gonna restore it. Or the cost of restoration exceeds the market value prior to injury. So yes, we can restore it to its formal value before the injury, but the cost, it's what it's gonna cost us to do that is more than it's actually worth. 
And so how do you kind of determine what exceeds is, well, the cost of repairs must be clearly disproportionate to the loss in value. So if it exceeds it by $1, you'll probably still determine, well, we're gonna go ahead and give them the cost to repair. Versus if the cost of restoration exceeds by 1 million, well, we're gonna look more at the diminution in value. Step number one is always to determine if the property is permanently or temporarily damaged. After you've determined that, you have to go to the second step, which is actually measuring the damage, right? Which is either the cost of repair or diminution of value. And those formulas or how to measure um, them are on page 572. Cost of repair is pretty self-explanatory. It's the amount it costs to restore the property to its fair market value before the injury. Diminution of value is also fairly simple, but you have two numbers, which is the difference between the fair market value of the property before and after the injury. And we make diminution of value an option, even though we can repair something, because we don't like waste. If it's going to cost more to repair something that's worth not very much, then we'd rather just give them the difference in the value um, before and after the injury than pay thousands of dollars to fix something that maybe be worth only $100. But within this formula, one thing that still needs to be determined is, well, what is a fair market value? How do we measure what's the fair market value before and after injury? And on page 580 to 81, there are three ways to assess the value of property. One, which is to use the value of similar properties, um, value from different appraisers, the uh, expert evidence that the court can use. It's kind of just a bunch of evidence to determine, well, what's the fair market value? Also, you can say, um, determine the replacement cost less than depreciation, the price of a new property minus the percentage of the original property already used up as well as capitalization of earnings, the value of how much income the property will produce over time. Now to close out this lecture, I wanna make sure we return back to this confusing Terra case to actually break down how the court applied the cost of repair and diminution of value rules in this case. And first they had to go to step one was a property damage per permanent or temporary. And they actually decided kind of a hybrid theory where they said, well, yeah, it's temporary because Terra didn't provide enough evidence to show that crafts a restoration didn't actually restore it to the full value or what the value of the property was even before contamination and their auction price was even before the remediation. So we don't know what it would be after they fixed it, after Kraft repaired it. But at the same time, it is kind of permanent because Terra site might still have further li liability due to the contamination. It was contaminated for years and there's stigma associated with PCB contamination that Terra might never get rid of. However, due to the burden of proof and the amount of evidence they decided Terra needed to produce, they went with, well, we're gonna go temporary. Crafts already paid the cost to repair. So Terra has already gotten some of its remedy. But it acknowledged that, you know, the cost of repair isn't gonna fully compensate Terra for its loss. As we saw, you know, there could be further liability or stigma. So they came up with this kind of hybrid rule where in these cases, the cost of repair, which again is already paid by Kraft, is gonna be awarded plus any remaining loss if the cost of repair fails to fully compensate. But even here, they determined there wasn't any other evidence to say there was extra loss. And so that's why Terra's claims were all denied.